a great murderer would stand up in a court of law, put his hand on the Bible without mental reservation, and take an oath. He knew this was the Word of God. But about 70 or 80 years ago, something happened. Higher critics in Germany and then in England and finally in America began to attack the Bible, claiming it wasn't really the Word of God. They claimed it was full of myths, that it had full of errors, that there were archaeological mistakes, scientific errors. They claimed that it was wrong about creation and so much more. What is the truth? The truth is that God has inspired the Bible that I believe that the evidence will show if an unbiased person looks at the evidence we share in this whole series is, in fact, inspired by God, is authoritative, and is accurate from cover to cover. How can I make such claims? I spent 30 years doing research, and I found that the Bible is what it claims to be, that it's full of awesome archaeological and historically accurate statements, statements made of scientific and medical matters that are thousands of years in advance of its day. Statements made in the Bible that actually contain prophecies about the coming of Adolf Hitler, of the Gestapo, prophecies about the death camps, Auschwitz, and Bergen-Belsen. I'm going to share with you in the course of this series some of the most astonishing biblical discoveries that Israeli scientists have discovered that underneath the Hebrew text of the Bible is a phenomenon where God has spelled out significant names and places that show prophetic knowledge because they're written 3,500 years before they occurred. I believe that the Bible is inspired by God. You see, Time Magazine is just one example, has done a cover article a few months back, Is the Bible Fact or Fiction? Archaeologists in the Holy Land are shedding new light on tales of the scriptures and what did and didn't actually happen. What Time Magazine is claiming is, of course, that the Bible's full of myths. They claim that the Bible cannot be trusted. Oh, yes, they will agree that they found some awesome archaeological confirmations. And I'm going to share them with you in the course of this, uh, this series. But I want you to realize that Time Magazine is part of a whole educational and media attack on the Bible. They claim that the Bible's not true. Has this had an effect? Look around you. The moral collapse of Western culture, the crime wave, is related directly to the fact that our society has lost its moral anchor. Instead of, as it has been for 1,700 years, believing that revelation of God showed what was right and wrong, good and evil, our society today has lost its way. It's put aside the Bible. And as a result, we're now left to vote as to whether abortion is right, whether euthanasia is right. We've lost our way. Not only that, but even within the church, people have now lost a confidence in the Word of God. As a result of these attacks, the result is winds of doctrine, people running after experience, people unwilling to measure their experience or their doctrine against the Word of God. All of this is a result of a diminished view of the inspiration of Scripture. What does the Bible say? The Bible says all Scripture is inspired of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, and for correction. Now that word inspired means God breathed, that God overshadowed the mind of the writers. Forty-four men over a 1600 year period recorded the words of God. Now I call this whole series the signature of God. Why? Because I believe that if God inspired writers to record his instructions, he would have done something else. God knew that the world would be full of literally hundreds of other religious speculations, books that would claim to be the Word of God from Dianetics to so many others. How then would God differentiate His genuine revelation from all of these spurious ones? The answer, He would write His signature upon its pages. By doing so, God would put something in the Bible of such awesome supernatural nature that man alone could not have done it. In this series, we're going to share some of those evidences, some of those evidences that will prove to any unbiased person that God is the author of the Bible, that he inspired the writers to record his words. You know, Time Magazine just did a series, and on Easter, they did about the search for Jesus. What they did is they recorded the words of the Jesus Seminar. And the Jesus Seminar is a group of 75 self-appointed scholars that over the last number of years have examined the words of the Gospels. You wouldn't be surprised to find out that they have rejected the Gospels. They have rejected the words of Jesus Christ. In fact, 
meeting at the Flamingo Resort Ballroom in Santa Rosa, California, they stated that the testimony from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is notoriously unreliable. They threw out the evangelist testimony on the Nativity, the Resurrection, the Sermon on the Mount, and any number of other things. The Bible says that the Bible is true. In fact, what we find is that in the book of 2 Peter, Peter, one of the Gospel writers, tells us the following. He says in verse 17 of 2 Peter chapter 1, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. He claims we're describing what we saw, Jesus Christ risen from the dead. Well, this attack on the Bible has had its effect. While the universities of America over 119 of the first universities in America, 87% of them were evangelical Christian institutions when they were founded. Harvard University was founded as a Christian institution. For the first century, every single one of the professors was a born-again believer. How times have changed. They now have rejected the Word of God. They have rejected and claimed that the evidence does not show that it is inspired. But the evidence is something quite different. I'm going to share with you evidence that I believe will show that you can trust the Bible. But this relentless attack in the last 70 years has had its effect. Do you know that when they did a survey, Dr. Jeffrey Hayden surveyed 10,000 Protestant mainline pastors in 1965. And in that survey, he asked them a series of questions. The questions were, what do you believe? They asked him the question, for example, do you believe in the inspiration of Scripture? He was shocked to find out that when they asked that question, 80% of the ministers could not answer, I totally agree with the inspiration of Scripture. They answered anywhere from partially agree, partially disagree, or totally disagree. When asked the question, was Jesus born of a virgin? Over 50% of the ministers could not say, I totally agree. Was Jesus the Son of God? Over 80% of the ministers said they could not totally agree. Do you know that the cross was one of the best attested ancient historical events. We know more about the crucifixion of Jesus in the last eight days of his life than we know about any ancient individual. The truth is, we know a lot about the Bible, not only about what the Bible has to say about the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, but we know also what ancient historians have to say. And what ancient historians have to say about Jesus is fascinating. In the signature of God, I report some of the historical statements made by many of these individuals. But do you know that if you go to Jerusalem today, you can go to the empty tomb? It's only about 300 yards away from the place where the body of our Lord was crucified, and then they laid him in this tomb. If your eyes are good, you will notice at the bottom of the door, there's a ledge. That ledge was to hold the stone that would roll down and cover that doorway. That tomb was never used to lay another body. Underneath that whole garden, I have seen there's a cistern, a cistern holding 200,000 gallons of water, another evidence that this was a rich man's garden tomb. They've also found evidence of mikvahs, meaning a ritual bath for a Jew, that this was a wealthy individual who had a home to the north of Jerusalem, and Arimathea, where Joseph of Arimathea lived, was just a little more to the north of that tomb, about four miles you know that we actually have a picture of what Golgotha looked like in the days of Jesus? Oh, we couldn't go back and take a photograph 2,000 years ago, but in 1890, no construction had been done in that area. And here we can see that on the right-hand side of the picture, you can see two eye sockets and a nose and also the mouth. And this is what caused the Jews to call this the place of the skull. Here we have evidence that this was the very place of the crucifixion and the Romans only had one place in ancient cities where they did executions. It was such a nasty business. They only had one place and this was the place that even Stephen was taken. And we know that Stephen was martyred there. We also know that uh, an individual like Jeremiah was imprisoned there in a cistern prison. Well, the evidence continues to mount that we can trust the Gospels. Do you know that the tombs of the early Christians have actually been found? tombs that relate to people mentioned in the Gospels. Here is the tomb of Caiaphas, the high priest, that was found only five years ago. 
When my wife Kay and I were in Jerusalem, we heard that they had discovered the tomb of Caiaphas. Now in Matthew chapter 26, verse 57, it says, And they that had laid hold on Jesus led him away to Caiaphas the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. This was the Sanhedrin, the highest court of law in the land of Israel. This is where the trial took place. There were two trials, one for the Jewish religious trial and the other for the Romans. Both of them equally agreed and crucified our Lord. Every one of us was there at the cross, represented by those people there. All of us crucified Jesus Christ. All of us have rejected Jesus Christ and his salvation, and we need to make a decision to accept him again. But you know, they didn't only find the tomb of Caiaphas, the high priest. This is the first priest of the temple period whose tomb has ever been found. I'm wearing a ring. This ring has a coin on it that perhaps the camera can pick up. That coin that is in this ring that I got in Jerusalem is 2,000 years old. It's 42 AD. They actually found...